I'm standing in a small, narrow, upright cubicle in the chapel of the separate prison at Tasmania's convict settlement of Port Arthur. In the early 1800s, the difficult prisoners were placed in the separate prison. The intention was to break their spirit, not by the usual method of beating, but by keeping them entirely separate from one another. In fact, even in the chapel, they could look at the preacher who stood there, they could sing the hymns, but they weren't allowed to look at each other nor to speak to each other. That was the rule for the entire separate prison. But most of their time was spent inside these tiny cells, on their own. They did their work here, which was mainly tailoring. They had a few possessions. Every three months they could write a letter, and every three months they could receive one. If they needed something, they pulled a handle inside the wall here, and the signalling tablet outside summoned the guard. The cells were always lit, and the guard could peep at them through the peephole and pass their food through the door as well. But they weren't physically punished. In fact, every day after breakfast they were given exercise. But getting to the exercise yard provided a problem. A prisoner might actually see another prisoner. So they had a rule which said whenever two prisoners approached, one had to stop and face the wall while the other one walked past. Also, to make absolutely sure that prisoners couldn't recognise each other, they were required to wear special uniforms with hoods over their faces. To keep the noise level right down in the prison, the corridors were covered with a rough type of carpet and the guards wore soft slippers. Bushfires and weather have taken their toll here, and now there are only marks on the ground to show where walls once stood. But those walls were once well above head height. Inside them, the prisoners could exercise, but they couldn't see each other, and they were forbidden to try and talk to each other over the top of the wall. The separate prison had a central hallway from which everything radiated out. From here, the officers in charge could see the cell blocks, the A block, the B block and the C block on the sides and also see into the exercise yards which were in the corners. The officer in charge at night had to look down the corridors all the time keeping his eye on the cells and he also had to show that he was alert by pushing little brass pegs into a special time clock every 15 minutes. The supervisor checked the next morning to make sure he was alert. If he wasn't, pay was docked. If prisoners insisted on speaking to each other, or shouting, or answering back the guards, they were given a special kind of punishment, the dark cell. And the dark cell was the worst kind of punishment cell, because in here, the prisoners who had been deprived of speech and contact with each other were deprived of pretty well everything else. The walls were a metre thick, and they were stone, so no sound got in. And there was a system of double doors, so that even though the guard brought them food and water, he brought them shutting the outer door first, and no light got in, and they were in total darkness. The isolation in this place was so horrible that it said that even the toughest criminal was a broken man within a few months in the separate prison. <laughs> 